Um, I also want to uh, tee up this next uh, panel discussion that we're going to be having with uh, two, uh, well, an undergraduate and a graduate of the college. As you know, the entire focus of this event is to help our alumni connect across generations and, and across different geographies and to help us understand how being a Babson graduate actually can contribute to your, your business success, not only just because of what you've learned while you're in the classroom, but throughout your life. And so right now I'd like to welcome to the stage Jeff Avalon of Idea Paint and Martin Restrepo, who is a current Babson student, who is Idea Paint's representative in Colombia. Could you please come up and join me on stage? Actually, here, why don't you sit in the middle? Sit in the middle. Oh, I have to be in the middle, okay. <laughs> this is going to make me look like I'm, I'm uh, having problems focusing. He's um, always a gentleman. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Um, it, it's so wonderful to have you both here. The reason why, well, there were several reasons why we're very excited to have a discussion with Idea Paint today. And, and one was simply because it is probably the most um, well-known Babson, young Babson company out there right now. Not to take anything away from Zumba. How many of you did Zumba this morning? Okay. There. <laughs> At least we had one taker and, and it was good, right? Tegina? Yes. Great. Okay. Um, but, but when people think about fun, new, young companies that have recently come out of Babson, they often talk about Idea Paint. And so many of us have Idea Paint on our walls, and I'm going to give you a second to describe exactly what Idea Paint is. But what struck me when I was hearing your story was how it started in a Babson dormitory. I'm going to say dorm. I'm supposed to say residence hall these days, but it started in your, in your dormitory. I, I was just hearing stories over here about how you almost uh, poisoned everyone with the smells of the, of the paint early on, uh, and, and, and it has evolved to a lifelong passion involving so many Babson people. So can you give me a little bit of sense of the beginning of your, of your companies? Sure, so Idea Paint was founded our freshman year at Babson in 2002 by my classmate and friend John Gosha. And John was a part of the entrepreneurship tower at Babson, which I believe still lives on today and I think is one of Babson's, you know, one of cool, their coolest attractions. And the entrepreneurship tower is a bunch of like-minded individuals that truly come to Babson and want to embrace entrepreneurship and start businesses on campus. And, John was a member of the Entrepreneurship Tower and was in the middle of a brainstorming session with a number of other classmates. And they got frustrated with just being able to share their ideas. So they started taping up giant sheets of paper all over the wall. And all of a sudden they stood up and the conversation became much more active, much more dynamic, much more collaborative. And the idea for Idea Paint was born. They uh, you know, started by trying to put whiteboards all over the walls and then eventually looked into chalkboard paint and there was no chalkboard paint so eventually they came up with the idea for whiteboard paint and one of my favorite things about the idea paint story is it really represents the energy that's on campus at Babson and idea paint was you know I wasn't involved from day one but it was I remember watching its development over the four years that we were there and it was this intoxicating idea, for lack of a better word, I know you just mentioned the smell of the paint. I said toxic, <laughs> not yeah. intoxicating, but yes. <laughs> but uh, it, was this, it was this idea throughout our class where, you know, John had submitted it to the rocket pitch competition, which it won, of course, and then also it was a member of the Babson Hatchery, which was founded by Kevin Collarin uh, in his early days at Babson. Our, our commencement speaker this year. Exactly. And so, uh, and then also numerous other students and professors and so forth ended up per, uh, participating in the development of the idea over the, the years that we were there. And um, John decided to pursue it after college, which is when he invited me to join the team and help him launch it and build it. And um, it was really exciting for me. I had been, you know, lifelong passionate about entrepreneurship. My, first business was I was a lobsterman out of Beverly, Mass., uh, which I still do on the side for fun. And I was looking into a number of other things after graduation and really trying to leverage the Babson network to find you know, my passion and what I wanted to do. And I was looking into everything from 
franchising to being a Reebok athletic apparel distributor and so forth and a number of other things. And I ended up talking to John about the idea, which I had you know, watched build over the years we were at Babson and ended up jumping on board the team then. And uh, you know, Idea Paint, we, you, know, you asked originally what the product is. It's, you know, it's the simplest idea, but the impact that it has on people is tremendous. It's, it's a paint that goes on any smooth surface you want, and it tr transforms that surface into a high-performance dry erase writing surface, just like your whiteboard. And um, we, uh, when we launched the company in 2008, it launched with a specific purpose, which was to help impact companies, to help them develop their ideas and collaborate and team better. And we launched it into the architecture and design community. So over the past, our, our seven-year anniversary of our launch is in June of this year. Uh, over the past seven years, we've worked with the architecture and design community and the business community of the world on some of the most marquee office projects around the globe and really built the brand of Idea Paint into a brand that stands for a whole lot more than just paint. It stands for collaboration, company culture, and teamwork. And we sit here now today with over 150,000 successful installations. We're actively distributed in 45 countries around the globe. And some of our major customers are folks like Google, Facebook, Salesforce.com, Adobe, Siemens, Autodesk, companies like that. And we were talking, uh, Greg Burrell and Mr. and Mrs. Burrell are two of our earliest supporters and angel investors. We were discussing yesterday some of the different ways that the Babson Network has helped build idea paint. Yes, that, that's what I really find fascinating. So here are some of your angel investors. <laughs> they're, they're Babson uh, graduates. Tell us how, how else you, you were able, from a financial standpoint, how did those Babson connections help you go? So the, um, let's see, idea, <laughs> there's so many, it's tough to list, so I'll just go for it. But idea paint, two of idea paint's angel investors were Babson parents, two were Babson professors. One at the time, Greg Burrow, was a uh, member of the Board of Trustees and now on the GAB. Um, and then the, uh, the connections into our venture capital and private equity rounds are also related to Babson. So we're funded by Breakaway Ventures. They were our lead venture capital investor that gave us our first $5 million investment. And that, the connection into them came through one of the Babson parents. And uh, another interesting anecdote uh, Professor Green and Brush yesterday during the woman's talk mentioned that there was one venture capital firm when they published their initial findings on women and venture capital that stepped up and said, how can we help? And that was Breakaway Ventures. Um, then additionally, our second two rounds of private equity funding came from Fireman Capital Partners. And Paul Fireman you know, was the founder of that. He's the founder of Reebok and former CEO of Reebok. And, He's one of the distinguished entrepreneurs from years past. Um, so how did you connect with all of these pieces of Babson? So all of this is out there for you. How did you connect with it? Well, initially, John and Greg Burrell had a terrific relationship. And um, then also the Babson professors had seen Idea Paint be built over the years during college. It was in the rocket pitch competitions. It was submitted for class business plans. It was in the Babson hatchery. So, I mean, you know better than anybody else the energy around ideas that are on Babson's campus. I think one of the coolest things about Babson is the community really dives in and supports the idea. So as long as, and the students have the same energy. So people end up coming together on campus, and I remember, you know, talking to John about idea paint our sophomore, junior, senior years, and professors were reaching out to him, he was reaching out to professors, and many of those contacts ended up supporting the company through its launch. So tell me about how you reached back and accessed our faculty and, and worked with our professors even after you've left the college. So this was spectacular. You know, we, uh, when we were, gosh, in 2007 and eight, when we were really going through the angel investment rounds into our first venture capital round, you know, it's nerve wracking. Who do you raise venture capital from? How are the pitches going to go? You know, we had all taken all the business plan classes, but you know, not too sure exactly what the perfect business plan was. And we had this mantra of reach out to as many advisors as humanly possible. And 90% of the advisors we reached out to had to have been affiliated with Babson in some fashion. 
And what I was really amazed with was every time we reached out to a professor, and these were many times professors that we had never had, just called them or randomly showed up to their office hours and said, a great example was Professor Gavoni, who was a marketing professor at the time, just randomly showed up to his office hours and said, we're pitching an investor next week. What do you think of our marketing plan? And he spent three hours. And Professor uh, Joel Shulman, uh, when we were going through venture capital rounds and so forth, he, you know, he taught financing entrepreneurial ventures. So we reached out to him and he was a fantastic mentor. And what was really impressive was the Babson community was there to support the company throughout every step, whether they had an affinity to the company or not during the years it was in school. Now you have a lot of Babson employees and, and one of your representatives now is a Babson student. So I was amazed. I know Martin in many ways as one of the most uh, philanthropic uh, young students that we have uh, who has been working with me actually on the Global Scholars Program and trying to establish a global scholarship from Colombia uh, and, and actually elsewhere in Latin America. You, you've been casting your net very broadly. So I was amazed when I found out that he was also your Colombian representative. So talk to me about that. How did that happen? Well, Martin is, is uniquely amazing in general, but you know, one of Babson's uh, you know, young rising stars. It, I'm very biased. Um, but the, uh, <laughs> so am I. So, yeah. <laughs> so um, you know, Martin, you, know, you mentioned he's an employee. He's, he's not an employee, he's an entrepreneur. And you know, in true Babson spirit. And Martin, when he was a freshman, reached out to IdeaPaint amongst others um, and said, hey, I know the Colombian market, I know the Latin American market, I would like to help distribute Idea Paint in some fashion there. And Idea Paint over the years has gotten these requests in spades. You know, after we launched the company in 2008, we got 300 international requests a week for a period of time. And still to this day, every week, requests flow in. Martin was different, because number one, he was from Babson and I think everybody at the company is biased. <laughs> but um, so, you know, Babson, you always know you can trust, but he came in with the most spectacular business plan as just a freshman at Babson. And you could see the passion uh, he had for, you know, expanding the idea paint business into Colombia and Latin America but also the thoughtfulness he had put into the business plan and the conversation he was having with us was night and day in comparison to the thousands of other requests we've had over the years for this market. And um, so we kicked off. I'll let him talk about the first meeting. Yeah, so, so, so Martin, how did you decide that you were going to pitch yourself uh, to Idea Paint, you, they're, they're pretty legendary on campus. Yeah. So did you know some of the, the, the people involved already or did you just say, I'm going to go out and do this? While I was in my Foundations of Entrepreneurship and Management class, I have always heard the professors talk about the, how successful the story of Idea Paint, and I was thrilled by the product, the idea of collaboration, the innovation, like what it brought out to new, to, you know, like new entrepreneurs, like already corporations, how it changed the way people work, and I really liked this idea, and th like the time I was in Colombia, and I analyzed other Latin American companies, I realized that this was a product that was missing in Latin America, that, could, that I was able and I could bring this product to Latin America to start working and changing the way people work into a more collaborative and into a more, like a better teamwork environment in the companies. Um, so my first idea was I had a contact, uh, I think many people here know StudyMac, the biggest retail construction company in Latin America. I had a contact there, and Babson has taught me like an entrepreneurial spirit. So um, I thought, of, I have this contact, I can approach Sodimac, and I can, get, like, I can pitch them the idea of Idea Paint, and I can get a commission of the sales that Sodimac, um, like <laughs> I, the sales that Idea Paint does <laughs> through Sodimac. <laughs> That was my freshman year, and then in the pricing structure, it didn't work the deal with Sodimac. 
Um, so that day I told my father it didn't work. I was very excited with all of the process with Idea Paint, and I told him I'm able to do this. I'm able to develop a business plan to distribute Idea Paint in Latin America. I talked to my FME professors, Caroline Daniels and Professor Schlesinger. I told them the idea I had, uh, that I wanted to develop this business plan. I worked two weeks in it, and then I presented the business plan to the two, company, uh, to the two professors, and they gave me their input, and then I talked to Idea Paint. I told them that even though the Story Mac deal uh, wasn't successful, that I was able to to distribute the product around Latin America. I showed them the business plan. They liked it, and they gave me the distribution about one year ago. Um, in August of 2014, we did the first import to Colombia, three pallets. Uh, the first four months were Which very Which is not hard. an insignificant order. <laughs> the first four months were very hard, because as you know, it was a completely new product for Latin America. It is an expensive and premium product, so it was very hard to change the mindset of like people buying Idea Paint instead of a regular whiteboard that was 50% cheaper than Idea Paint. So it was very hard to start changing this mindset and showing that our product had an, a different and aggregate value over the whiteboard or every every other uh, like um, right like erase erase surface board. So it took four months. We didn't have any sale in the first four months of operations in Colombia. Um, like my financials were already very bad. <laughs> I needed to pay interest to my father. I was almost, and I, like my father was telling me, like you haven't been selling in four months. What are you going to do? I have been giving samples to big companies, Bank Colombia, Argos, and but like they haven't come any sales to universities, and. Um, it was hard to be in Babson, but like manage the company while being in Boston. So um, I like the first first team I developed was I wasn't I wasn't happy with the team. The, the sales were like he, the person that I, I had in charge in Colombia wasn't selling the product how I wanted. So I stepped back. I went to my professors again. I told them what was happening, and they gave me the advice that I needed to. I, like bring this entrepreneurship to an action, a mindset of Babson, a stop and like rethink what I had done in this first, month, first four months and how could I change a, my business plan into a more successful plan. I changed the team and um, in this first four months of 2015, we have already sold about 200 kits in Colombia. We have operations in Peru. We exported already a pallet to Peru. We're beginning to close a deal in Chile. That is, uh, this ch company in Chile distributed our main competitors in Latin America uh, that are wall talkers. And, uh, and we have been able to show them that Idea Paint is a much better product. And in Colombia already, they stopped distributing wall talkers. They're going to start working with us. And now we're going to start in Chile with them. And in Colombia, I would say that thanks to the Babson Network, we have been able to position Idea Paint as the market leader. I have, I think I can see Giorgio there. Um, he, he knew Idea Paint from Babson, and as soon as Camilo Velasquez, another Babson alumni, um, knew that I was distributing Idea Paint, he knew the product, uh, like the way people work with it in Babson. So he works in Bank Colombia. He's the director of innovation of Bank Colombia. So he helped me to enter into Bank Colombia, then Georgia into C Discount, and it became a snowball. Then I entered to uh, Grupo Argos in, in Colombia, and now we have Bank Colombia, Argos. Uh, some of the most important universities in Colombia have already applied uh, Idea Paint. So thanks to the Babson Network and people that already knew mm -hmm. Idea Paint, we have been able to position the product as a market leader. <laughs> Clearly, this story is not over, right? This, is not, this story is not fully written yet. And what I loved about your description of how you got interested in, in doing this, Martin, was I was thinking about Raj Sisodia's presentation uh, yesterday when he was talking about that the motivation has to be something good. And you want business here in Latin America to have the access to that collaborative nature that you think Idea Paint brings. And it was not, I want to 
sell idea paint. It was that you wanted to bring that collaborative nature to business. And so that's a wonderful motivation, and I think you will succeed. I'd like this to be a conversation about Babson Networks. And just to, I'm going to put someone on the spot here. If we can, we get um, a microphone to um, back there to Carol Hacker. Um, who is our Vice President for Alumni and Friends Network. And I have been very passionate about trying to figure out how we can better serve our alumni so that they can be more connected. And one of the projects that I've been working with with, with Carol is, has been uh, the idea of an online alumni networking platform. And Carol, I just was going to ask you to say just a few words very quickly about where we are and what we're hoping to do and when we hope to roll it out. Well, I'd like to roll it out uh, tomorrow. Um, <laughs> but I think it will be rolled out in September. If you've gone to our website or used our alumni directory, you're probably finding it adequate but not as spectacular as it should be coming from the number one school in entrepreneurship. So what we'd like to do is fill two needs, and I think you've seen some of those needs here today and yesterday and Friday. One is to grow the connections that Jeff and Martin have been talking about, connecting students with alums for business purposes and to share their passions. That's not quite possible with what we have today, but it will be possible with what we have in September. If you have a business and you're looking for angels or you're looking for VCs, we'd like you to be able to tell the world that through this portal. If you are an angel, if you are a VC, and you'd like to support Babson students and alumni, that will be accessible through this portal. I think Jeff said it best a few minutes ago, who better to work with, who better to trust than someone connected to Babson College? So we're going to make that easier for you. I do have a favor um, for you, of all of you, though. We can only do that if we know who you are and where you are and what you're doing. So we're going to ask a favor of you as we roll this out, which is to provide us a little more information to make it easier for students and alums to find the right people. If I want to work with someone who's, uh, Carrie and I always use this example, if I want to find someone who's in jewelry manufacturing in India, I should be able to find that through the Babson Network. I should be able to find an alum, a parent, a student who can make those introductions for us. So that will happen there. The other really neat thing about the portal that I think you probably are thinking about as you leave here is how can we all stay connected to each other? How will this group at this Connect, this Worldwide Connect, stay connected through the next year? And how will we add our friends that come to us in Dubai? That's another neat feature of this portal. We'll be able to grow communities of all kinds. Think about LinkedIn, but really, really, really focused on what's important to our community. I think about some of the things that could come out of this conference, and not just this connect group, but I think about women entrepreneurs. I think about the great works that we've heard from some of our presenters here and having faculty create groups that are interested in continuing the dialogue that you've started here today. So all of that will happen in September as soon as I get back and send you all pictures um, of this event and get through commencement. We're going to rapid fire this because that's what we do at Babson. And we're very, very excited to roll this out for you in the fall. So stay tuned. And I'm counting on all of you to be my first adapters of it. Is that helpful, Carol? That's great. Thank you, Carol. Thank you so much. Yeah. So with that, I'd like to throw the floor open. If anyone has any ideas, suggestions, questions, yes. So, Martin, I, I, I want to tell you that I was very, very inspired by your initiative to bring the products to Latin America because when I was your age, that was my dream also, and I was able to make my dream come true, and that, that's how you make it big. You know, I was able to bring uh, brands like Lego into all Latin America in the toy business and several other uh, brands. Um, I'm a little sad that I don't have that distribution for Latin America. You took it over from me. 
Uh, but I but I, I really, I, I had a chance to talk to you and I wanted to congratulate you on your motivation. Uh, you told my wife and I that you wake up at every, he wakes up every day at four in the morning to, to, to be able to cope with the, with the studies as well. So I wanted to congratulate you and let you know that my daughter is a freshman and I'm going to introduce you to her. <laughs> her name is Tatiana. <laughs> Thank you. All right, Any, anything else? Well, I would like to just thank our panelists today for sharing their amazing and, and inspirational story, and I hope that you and all of your partners, because how many, how many Babson people are involved now with IdeaPaint? We currently have four at the company, including our CEO, but we just hired our, our, two of our top inside sales rep performers are two young women that graduated from Babson last year. And they have been spectacular. So Babson, Idea Paint really is a Babson story, and the community of Babson has really helped build the business over the years. Great. Well, I expect to see you all in Dubai. Absolutely. Okay. All right. Thank you very <laughs> Thank much. You.